So jump right from our dashboards, let's jump right inside our search window. Inside our search window, there are a few different main methods that you can query when you are searching for something. The first one, absolute favorite amongst most security analysts, just click on search. Click on search, we will execute a search to show you all of the repositories that you care about. In this case, we have four chosen by default over the last 30 minutes. Bang, here are, all the, here are all the events that I can see inside here. So with this information now, we can actually limit. So I could actually say, oh, look, this device name equals Palo Alto. I'm actually interested in this one. So no need to type anything, just click on Palo Alto. And you'll notice on top here, we've rewritten that query to say, where the device name equals Palo Alto. Now, even in the last 30 minutes, I still have quite a few events. So you're able to add in additional sort of um, actual query logic on top of this. So I add in a pipe command and I'm going to say time chart and we're going to count and see what this looks like. What I've done now is I've said, show me in the last 30 minutes where the device name equals Palo Alto, pipe that into time chart count. So show me when am I seeing these events? Now, as a security analyst, yep, that bar graph looks fairly decent. You know, you can see one event, little more events per hour, things like that. But what makes it even more exciting here is if I could apply that on a line. And the reason this is relevant is that are you seeing events that are generated at a higher frequency at potentially off our work or during our work? Right. So this is very important as a security analyst to go through and say, is somebody trying to do something malicious? Did somebody start a Netcat service and the Netcat service is now operating outside of regular working hours? This is something that's very important. And you can be very granular with how you drill down and how you execute these searches and limit it back. Just clicking in our main search window takes you right back to where you were. This search window contains your search history. There's your device name equals Palo Alto piped into time chart count. So, <coughs> so all of our search queries that we've written in the past, they appear here. You can save a search. You can leverage a search template. You can use labels. I'll come onto that in one of the later sections. We have vendor searches specific for certain vendor technologies. In this case, SAP. You'd like to, you'd like to set up a search to say, show me all the times that people have turned logging off in an SAP system. SAP runs uh, a lot of human resources, payroll, finance, things like that. If somebody disables logging, that's pretty serious. I would like to have a custom log that I can execute and go and query that, maybe even build it into an SAP dashboard, whatever I need. So in this case, let's go and take a look very, very quickly at our threat hunting latest. The threat hunting latest leverages a search template. The search template is kind of like a mini dashboard, but it is built by you on the fly, leveraging saved queries. The incident overview here, you'll see it's got a little drop down and it gives me in this drop down that I'm able to actually edit this query and see what's going on. I'm just going to, I'm just going to click on update. And what it does, it goes right away and it performs the query based upon the item that I'm looking at at this time. So in this time, I'm looking at the user Henry Dave source address. This can be anything, 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 anything. Come back and now I find you leveraging the search template leverages the top user with any of their addresses for threat intelligence. So it's very quick for me now to have kind of like my mini dashboard that I can leverage myself.